KMR, and we are back. We're going to talk rotary. We're going to talk the BRAP. So I've got a pair of rotors right here in front of me, and I was going to talk about just a couple modifications that we often do to rotary engines. We're building at Mazda Tricks, at KMR, uh, some of the other shops we deal with, uh, highly recommended services um, that should be performed by professional rotary shops that will allow you to get higher RPM, uh, better reliability, better performance, and overall have a stronger rotary engine build. And uh, we're going to jump right into it. What we're talking about here is going to be balancing and then also side clearancing and matching up the widths of the rotors. Now, RX-7 and RX-8 rotors uh, have some minor dimensional differences. Um, as you start to spin rotaries faster, uh, more eccentric shaft deflection happens. And so the rotor at higher RPMs, higher boost levels has a tendency to start to lay over, often towards the center housing. But there is a rotational movement based on compression, exhaust intake, and the trichoidal pattern that the rotor's spinning in relation to the gear on the rotor and eccentric shaft. So that load variation causes, with RPM, causes the rotor to lay over. Um, obviously, there's a lot of things that can help this, but what we've found, what I've found, um, something I consistently do on all of my high-performance personal builds and that I recommend for customer motors as well, is that we narrow up and side clearance the tips of the rotors, and that's gonna allow for more movement. Um, it also allows us to match the rotors up. So casting to casting, year to year, there's variations, and uh, we have sp some specific specs that we know will allow the rotor to have clearance at those higher RPM or higher boost levels. So just some great tips and tricks, that technical information. I know everybody likes it. Um, that basically, you don't have to go crazy overboard with your build to increase boost levels or increase RPM. Um, basic things like just balancing and proper tip clearancing and matching of rotors can achieve some amazing things. Packages just like this can get up into the 9,000, 9,500 9, RPM range. Um, and uh, we've even used rotors exactly like this in my 1,000 horsepower drift motors, and they have worked perfectly well. I always recommend, you know, uh, doing what you feel is going to be best. Um, decide what your RPM goals are, your horsepower goals, your boost level goals. And then it's really possible to build an internal package to suit those needs. This wouldn't be the highest level of protection and performance, but this is a great way to increase performance of stock rotors um, and utilize those rotors in a higher performance build and worry less about that shaft deflection, rotor layover, and pinching your seals or breaking your seals if you do end up getting rotor to side housing, side plate contact, um, which then can cause housing damage, rotor damage, and motor failure. You just don't want that. It's better to have the clearance. It's better to be ready to race, ready to rock. That's what we're all about. It's all about the brap. And I think that's a wrap. Thanks for watching. KMR, a little rotary talk on the rotors.